Thank you so much, Bruce, for delivering that important and powerful message about the year of the work, the learning that has happened in Leander ISD these past 12 months. Um, we're so grateful to all of our staff and teachers and students for being a part of that. We're going to kick it into panel, so please continue to submit questions. We're going to try to answer as many as we can. Um, we figured if we could be online in a two-way platform, let's make it two-way. Let's uh, be accessible, answer the questions of our business community, our partners, our community members, our teachers, students, anybody who's watching. Um, I'd like to do take a, take a minute to introduce our panel just so you know who we have here to answer questions. Um, we have Assistant Superintendent John Graham joining us. John, wave to, the, Good wave to the folks at home. We also have our Assistant Superintendent for Pathways in, in, in Innovation, Krista Carlene. Good morning. We have our Chief Financial Officer, Elaine Cogburn. And joining us shortly, we'll have our Chief Academic Officer, Dr. Matt Bentz, joining us. And we're going to go ahead and kick it in to some question time. And I'm going to start, because he just loves talking so much, um, is John Graham. Because John Graham, as the Assistant Superintendent, is overseeing the safety programs, student support, and so many of those extra programs that students take advantage of in arts, athletics, and after school, um, and services and everything in between. John basically is running everything, and so he gets to answer most of the questions. And John, the first question is about what is fall going to look like? Um, we know that we have committees that are working towards planning for for fall. We know there's a lot to be unknown. We know that we are going to have an announcement on June 18th and then in July as well um, as we gear up for fall planning. But what would you like to share with people who are just sitting at home wondering what school's going to look like in August 2020? Thank you for giving me the easiest question to start with, Corey. Um, I, I wished I, I knew exactly what school's going to look like, but I do know school will start in August. Uh, we are working <clears throat> diligently to have a plan in place where students can learn at the level that our parents and our students expect and our teachers expect, uh, but also in a safe and, and healthy way. Uh, what that may mean is uh, students returning back into our classrooms, but also students uh, returning back to virtual learning. Uh, it may be a mixture, but uh, we are working diligently to have a plan where come August, our students are able to learn at the level that they left off at in, uh, in March. And uh, it may look different with inside our buildings or on our buses, uh, but uh, we are working diligently to follow all the state's rules and uh, health and CDC guidelines. And we are actively creating plans, but uh, we anticipate school starting in August it just may look differently, but uh, the expectation for learning will not change. It will be at the highest level. And John, there's questions about who's a part of the planning, who's a part of the, the discussion and the collaboration, specifically about teachers. Um, can you share on how we're collecting feedback, engaging with people, and making sure that there's a, f a focus on how we deliver instruction and learning, and, and how we know that if we're not supporting teachers, lear learning can't happen. So what can you say about the voices who are a part of the planning for August 20th? So, as Dr. Gehring mentioned in, in his State of the District address, uh, we have two committees that have been formed. The committees are made up of district and campus administrators, uh, but we are seeking out the voices of our instructional coaches, our assistant principals, our deans. Uh, we are getting feedback from our community through Thought Exchange. We have a district-wide improvement committee meeting this evening that will be receiving feedback. Um, our principals have been tasked with, with getting feedback from all stakeholders, our teaching and learning staff, uh, which it consists of uh, experts in the different content areas, are getting feedback from, from teachers and, and instructional coaches. Um, our plan is to have uh, a very robust professional development plan uh, 
when teachers return to work so that they are fully prepared for what will be expected uh, for for learning in, in the uh, fall semester. But there is many ways that uh, we are trying to get feedback from all stakeholders. And, and if you uh, have uh, uh, any information that you would like to share, uh, please reach out to your principals, reach out to us through Let's Talk. Uh, we are we are taking all information and considering all information. We are looking at information from across all states and and different uh, entities in, in in our own state. So uh, we are not doing this alone. We know we can't do this alone. Feedback is important to us and input from all from all stakeholders is important. Thank you, John, for sharing that important work. And again, we'll continue to communicate out with our community as decisions are made. Um, a, a great next point to check in. Uh, we have a school board meeting on Thursday where this will be an agenda item. Next week is when we plan on presenting a more robust amount of information as to what the fall could look like and what the work and planning has been thus far. So please continue to follow the news on LanderISD.org, email, and our social media channels. We know that for so many of us, the, our hearts and minds are in um, the, the, the conversations and the advocacy around um, our black community, around racism. We released a, a statement around racism after the tragic death of George Floyd and so many members of the black community in the, the nation. Um, and we know we've been doing work around equity and diversity um, for the last year and a half. Um, so this question is for Krista Carleen. She's a member of our Diversity and Equity Task Force. She's gonna be presenting a report from some town halls and a survey we did in, in, in February and March at, tomor at tomorrow's school board meeting. Krista, what would you like to share with the, uh, the viewers at home about the Equity and Diversity Committee, about tomorrow's report? And there's questions about what's next about um, will we have another town hall meeting? Um, what's the, what are the next steps for Lander ISD and our continuous improvement to stamp out racism and create equity for all? Thanks, Corey. So our immediate next step will be uh, to present the report to um, the committee at the board meeting tomorrow. Um, and then we will plan out some additional steps from there. Um, I will say we've had our equity uh, task force for about two years here and the members of that task force and their passion for this work um, makes me so very proud to work in this district and um, we know we have a lot of work to still do we know we need to expand that task force and we need to reach out to our community members and include more people not only that are in the district but also community members that may not be directly in our district as well um, and so our first step will be to release that report and to have our discussions um, because that is the first um, time we will uh, have talked publicly um, about uh, what some of the findings are. Um, and then our next step will to be able to come back with some additional action steps throughout the year. Um, our cabinet has also been discussing um, what are the next steps that we can do as a leadership team um, to help with equity and diversity in our district and how do we help uh, be the leaders that we know our students and families deserve. Thank you, Krista, for sharing that. Um, we have Dr. Benz on the line now. Um, and, and Dr. Benz, there's a lot of questions about about learning, about virtual learning, about parent and student and family choice going into the fall. Um, what can you talk, what can you share with our families about our new initiative or our, our initiative for revamped virtual and remote learning or our empowered virtual learning um, for families who are gonna be looking for that as an option as we enter August? Sure, uh, good morning, everybody. Um, yeah, as we, as we look to the fall, and as we make preparations for, for um, how we can open up our schools and how we can get kids into our facilities, one of the things we also know is that we will still have uh, students and families out there that are, are wrestling with challenges like illnesses, um, health vulnerabilities in the family, um, a, a discomfort or, or fear um, of, of going back out into a, a situation where there are a lot of human, being mixing, human beings mixing in one place. So we know we need to, um, it, is, it is vital that we continue to offer an online option for our families. We also know 
that um, while our, our teachers and, and our people did amazing work um, creating uh, an emergency remote learning environment for, for to finish out the spring, as we move into this fall, our, our virtual environment needs to be very robust and it needs to meet some additional quality indicators. As you know, Corey, we we did a survey about halfway through the, the spring with and got 11,000 responses from teachers, parents, and students. We just sent out a thought exchange that got thousands of responses as well. And what we know about um, what we're calling uh, virtual empowered learning for the fall is that it pe people want several um, components to to really be enriched and and um, added to this virtual learning experience. Number one, they want to have opportunities to connect with their their peers and with their teachers. So, what does that mean? That means we will have um, what we what we call synchronous learning. That means there are going to be times when people are logging in um, to a classroom with their teacher, whether it's on Google Meets or Zoom. There will be opportunities um, where our students will be in small groups working with the teacher. Maybe, for instance, on a reading group or or a science lab. Um, you may be um, in, you'll get some time uh, with your teacher in an individual conferencing situation. There'll also be tutorial tutorial hours and office hours for, te for teachers, things like that. The other thing we know is that we need um, to have consistent digital platforms. So we have invested in, in Seesaw. It's an incredible digital platform that all of our teachers pre-K through second grade will be using and getting trained on and using um, in the coming year. And then Google Classroom, we are really it, going through an initiative to get make sure that most of our teachers already have that training, but that all have it and that we are all using it. So that when the, the, a student is in our virtual learning environment, that the interface is much um, much more streamlined that they can log in through Launchpad. That the child will know how to how to log in and get the information um, about their classes, um, accessing their teacher, accessing their their assignments, um, uploading the the information, the evidence of learning, and things like that. That it will be much more um, streamlined so that parents uh, won't be getting uh, ten thousand emails about what needs to happen we are at our our teachers will still be communicating um very thoroughly and using multiple media methods uh to ensure that our parents are, are a partner in the learning process but we know we need to streamline that that practice as well that's that's a kind of a thumbnail on some of the ways that virtual empowered learning will be different from remote learning that occurred just this last spring thanks corey Dr. Benz, I'd be remiss or I would be very disappointed if I didn't ask the question, is that in fact the very hungry caterpillar on your wall behind your left shoulder? That is. Um, Eric Carl is one of my daughter's favorite authors. And so we um, have that picture, believe it or not, that's in our dining room. So uh, yes, that is the hungry caterpillar, Corey. Look, I love the hungry caterpillar. Love Eric Carl. Have a lot of that in our house too. So, a, a big fan and a shout out to the hungry caterpillar. Um, we have some budget questions, and I know we have our CFO Elaine Cogburn here on our panel, um, specifically about funding and and budget and sources as we deal with the uh, economic impact of COVID nineteen. Um, Elaine, what would you like to share with the folks at home about what our budget looks like with so much uncertainty about economics? And we have a specific question regarding the ESSER grant um, and just federal grants in general um, about how we're uh, getting money to continue to operate in schools. All right, well, we're having technical problems with hearing Elaine right now. So I'll go ahead and, and go to a next question. And it's for Assistant Superintendent, Mr. John Graham, um, concerning um, our most vulnerable populations when it comes to their health are immunocompromised. Um, 
what will the, what will learning look like for those kids? What are we doing to take care of our most vulnerable students as well as our teachers and staff um, during this global health crisis? So that is our biggest concern. Um, one of my responsibilities is, is safety and health of, of, of the district and uh, making sure that our students and staff are safe and healthy at all times is important. And so we are looking at, at, at all measures, uh, how, we, how we set up our buildings um, in a six foot manner, um, you know, what personal protective equipment may be required to ensure that, that our staff and students are safe. Uh, looking at different uh, products to, to ensure that our buildings are, are cleaned and that our students and staff have the resources to, to thoroughly uh, not only clean, clean the environment that they're in, but also uh, keeping our hands and, and washed at all times. And so we, we are looking at it, of course, from a safety a component and making sure that we have all the, the different uh, supplies ready to go. But most importantly, uh, as Dr. Bentz mentioned when he was speaking, uh, giving the opportunity uh, for students to have choice. Uh, and, and that is the most important thing. We, we know that students uh, may have fear or anxiety entering back to school. Uh, and, uh, you know, what does learning look like for all students? It may look different. Uh, based on, on a student's needs, and, and that's what we're looking at, is trying to develop a system where we are meeting individual students' needs. And if that means that we have to uh, to adjust our, our learning uh, platform, then, then that's what we're doing. But we also have very clear protocols and guidelines for our staff, working closely with our human resources department. Um, if there is a case of uh, an infected person in our in our district having very clear guidelines and measures in place to to ensure that we uh, we we communicate and that we have cleaning measures in place and that we um, we we do certain things so that uh, the, the the people that may have come in contact we have very clear guidelines to follow, um, but. Uh, choice is going to be very important. Uh, we know it's going to look different, uh, and it may look different student by student, and, and that's the, the, the most important thing, I think, for people to understand is we're going to try to do our very best to meet the individual needs of students, and if there is a health situation, then, then we will set up an environment to help each student safely learn next school year. Thank you, John, for sharing that. We're having technical difficulties with Elaine. Good thing for all the viewers at home, if you're interested in our budget, we will be talking in-depthly about it tomorrow at our school board meeting and next week as well as we get into June um, and our deadline to, to pass. Oh, Elaine's going to pop, pop, pop in over and be able to answer some budget questions real quick. But I, I'll go ahead and move on while she gets configured and set up. Um, there's a question for Dr. Gearing, and it's about... Uh, and I can look over here instead of over here to talk to Dr. Gearing because we're in the same room. Um, what are your biggest concerns besides restarting school in the fall that the community can help with? Thank you, Corey. I will tell you that we need the support of every family in understanding what your situation is. Um, we need to know what's happening in your house because then we can help you. If we understand what your needs are, then we can make plans around that and meet those needs head on. So the communication is gonna become critically important to us as we go into the fall. That communication should come through your campus. Um, talk to the principal, talk to your teachers, talk to your uh, assistant principals and those who are at the campus ready to help you. Tell us what you need and we're gonna do everything in our power to meet those needs. Thank you, Dr. Gearing, for sharing that. Elaine, Chief Financial Officer for Leander ISD. I'm going to peek over here and see if she's if she's here. Can we hear I'm you? I'm here. Oh I'm yeah. Here. Elaine, you we know now? that you love talking budget. We know that with so much uncertainty concerning the economic conditions of the state and the nation, that budget and operations are at the hearts and minds and certainly at the forefront of discussions with our school board this month. Um, what would you like to share about the, the budget outlook and specifically about federal funding sources, state funding sources, these grants that are coming, coming out of legislation to help support schools and, and, and health and safety in, in our schools? 
Well, just like everybody else is facing a lot of um, uncertainty with the budget. I feel really good about where we are for the budget for next year. There's been a lot of work put in and a um, lot of sacrifices by the administrative team to put that together. Still working on the federal funds. We do know that we're getting about 700000 It's not really additional money. It is offsetting um, costs that we've already incurred. There are other grant applications coming in July. And so we'll be seeking those for um, additional support for the district. But we do have challenges that are not um, under, they're, they're manageable, right? So there's still uncertainty. We've got a good budget. We've got a decent budget for next year. And immediately in the fall, we will start planning for the years beyond that. Thank you so much, Elaine. And thank you for leading this cause of operating our schools. We know that if we don't have money, we can't take care of people, take care of kids. And um, we know that it's a, a tough time with so much uncertainty, as it is for so many. Um, we know that teachers and the people who support students, from counselors um, to all of our coordinators to librarians, everyone's coming together at the support of students in these most unique and, and different times. And we just want to thank everybody. Um, before we share some more stories. Um, I'd like to give uh, Dr. Gearing another chance just to share, you know, next steps what people can expect. I know we've talked a lot um, and we've, we've shared a lot and we know there's a lot more to know. Um, Bruce, any closing thoughts or final thoughts from you before we share our, our final videos? Thank you, Corey. I just want to share that I'm so excited to be a member of the One Ally SD family. This is an incredible place to be and I'm excited and hopeful for our future as we move forward. As long as we continue to collaborate strongly together, allow ourselves to fail forward, to make sure that we spread empowerment and ownership for learning down to the lowest levels of the district possible. And as long as we continue our cycles of improvement, we will be successful in the long run. So thank you for your support, for entrusting us with your most precious resource, we look forward to the year ahead. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you to all of our viewers at home. Thank you to Smile Doctors, Leaf, Cedar Park Chamber, Leander Chamber, West Austin Chamber. We have some amazing stories still left to tell. We have stories from Leaf, and we have some highlights from our student voice for the year. Um, it has been a critical component of our storytelling efforts this year to capture student voice, student thoughts, and shaping student experience with that. So we'd love for you to stay and, and watch some of those, some, some of our kids. Um, you're gonna get put back into a classroom in places that you haven't been in a while. Um, and we really think it's probably the most important of the show and that's why it's our grand finale. So we're gonna go ahead and roll those videos and thank you for those who submitted questions. You can continue to submit them here on Facebook and we'll try to answer on Facebook with your comments. And you can always get answers to information at leanderisd.org, support.leanderisd.org.